What's happening guys? Welcome to the final part in the Python for Data Science live stream. My name is Nicholas Renard and in this video we're going to be going through all the fundamentals that you need in order to be able to go through file writing. So writing stuff out to text files. We'll also take a look at file reading. So once you've written stuff out, how on earth do you read it back into a file or back into your Python script? And then last but not least, something which is actually really, really important, error handling. So you're probably thinking, well, I'm not going to write errors in my code. So how, why do I actually need error handling? Well, more often than not, there might be errors when accessing a data source or errors when accessing an API or just errors with data coming into your machine learning model or your deep learning model. So being able to handle those errors gracefully so your program doesn't just crap itself makes your life a whole ton easier. So we're going to go through a little bit of that and see how we can actually handle our errors. So let's get to it. Okay, so what we're going to do is, as per usual, we are going to go into our Jupyter Notebook. And I'm going to open up a new command prompt. So CMD. And then again, we need to open up the same Jupyter Notebook that we've been working in the entire time. So I'm going to go into my D drive, go into YouTube, and inside of Python Basics, that's where all of our Python good stuff is. And remember, we can start up Jupyter Notebooks from here, and this will allow us to access this specific notebook to be able to write some Python code. So let's go on ahead and do this. So I'm going to first up go into that folder. So we're going to go into YouTube. So, uh, actually, I need to be in my D drive, so D drive, CD, YouTube. And then we are in Python Basics, which you can see up there. So CD, Python Basics. And then we're going to kickstart and start up Jupyter. And remember, how do we start up Jupyter? We just type in Jupyter Notebook. And this will give us our interface to be able to write a bunch of Python code. Now I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see it a bit better. And we're going to keep on going with our same Jupyter Notebook that we've been going through through this entire series. So we can do that by opening up pythonbasics.ipynb. And we're going to scroll on down all the way to the bottom and we're going to finish up our last couple of sections. So what was our last section? Our last section was section eight where we're working with packages and we made API calls to get the ISS data. So we, I think we've got latitude, longitude, all a bunch of that stuff. But say for example, right? So we'll do working with files first, but this is, I want to talk a little bit more about error handling. If that API failed, it's just going to throw a bunch of errors or you might get an error in your request. So having your try catch block, which we'll talk about in a second, is going to make your stuff a little bit more graceful. So what are we going to do? We are going to write some stuff out using files first up. So as per usual, what we're going to do is we're going to structure our code really, really nicely. Because remember, you want to have structure and you want to have comments so you know what on earth you went and did maybe yesterday, whatever time, more often than not, I get into a habit of writing a bunch of code and then I go back and look at it and I'm like, Nick, what on earth have you just wrote? I mean, that was literally me this morning when building up um, a Siamese network. So again, writing and commenting your code and structuring it really nicely is going to make your life a whole heap easier later on. So what are we going to do? We're going to step out of this cell and we are going to convert it to markdown. So right now it's a code cell. We're going to convert it to a markdown cell by hitting M on our keyboard and you can see it's gone and converted to markdown and then we are going to let's check out what our last section was section eight got a little Kendrick up in there um, we're going to convert this to section nine so we're going to hit the pound symbol add in number nine and we're going to call this working with files key thing to note is that certain packages are also going to have their own functions for working with files so say for example you're working with pandas or you're working with numpy or you're working with tensorflow they have native file writing and file reading type functions built in so with numpy you can write it out to a dot npz format and read that back in but again if you want more details on that hit me up so what we're going to do this time is say for example we're an astronaut we're, we're continuing with our space theme we're an astronaut we're out floating in space and we want to log out a little bit of our log right or Let's say we want to write a journal. So how might we actually produce a journal? Well, we want to be able to save it down to our disk so that we can bring it back next time. Now, what we can actually do in Python is we can actually write out to a file. So let's go on ahead and do this and we will be able to see how we can do that. So I'm going to add a comment. So we're going to write out 
our mission journal j-o-u-r-n-a-l spelling is a shocker nick and then what we're going to do we're going to write it out so to do this we're going to use the with keyword and this allows us to work with unmanaged uh, data sources or data types so if you're working with stream based data or um, a service which you need to close automatically the with keyword makes this really really nice so with our file normally what you'd have to do is you'd have to open up the file write something to it and then close it by wrapping it up in this with keyword just makes it a little bit nicer and this is a really common way of writing out to files particularly it, it's very pythonic in that sense so what we're going to do is we're going to write this out so we're going to then write open and then we'll write uh we've got a name our mission log so we're going to call it mission underscore journal dot txt and then we need to pass through the mode that we want to write out our, our particular file in or the mode that we actually want to open our file in so if we actually type in open so the open function hit question mark question mark to open up the doco you can see that it's going to first up what we need to do is pass through a positional argument so let me zoom in on that so you can see that a bit better got to pass through a positional argument which is file then we need to pass through the mode and the default mode is going to be r which means read so sometimes the most common ones that i tend to use are r for read w for write rb for read binary this is particularly useful if you're using a file that is in a binary format and wb which is write binary as well um, but you can see that we've got a bunch of other keyword parameters or keyword arguments that we can pass through this as well Alrighty, enough on that. We are going to, because we want to write to our file, we are going to pass through W. And then when we're using this with statement, we need to pass through a variable or a placeholder variable that we're going to use to work with our file temporarily while it's open. So in order to do this, we can write as, and then common convention is you just pass through F. So let's take a look at that full line so far. So we've used the with keyword you can see there it's in green and then we've written open mission underscore journal dot txt so this is going to be the name of our file and then the second argument that we're passing through is w which means that we're going to be writing to our file and then in order to work with our temporary file while we've got it open because remember we're using the with statement over here we've written as f so this means that whenever we reference f what we're actually doing is referring to this document here so mission underscore journal dot txt cool now what we need to do is we need to actually write something out. So we can do this by using the write method. So I'm going to type in F dot, and there's a bunch of different methods that you've actually got here. So we can use uh, F dot close, F dot close, that, that actually checks if it's closed. Um, we actually want to use the write method down here. And then we can pass through what we want to write. Um, I don't know. It's my first day on the base mission. It is very nice. Very with one uh, uh, will make it to us. What the hell? All right, cool. Now, what we've written there is we've added F because remember F is going to refer to our file while it's open. And then we've used dot write to be able to write something out to that file. So if I go and run this now, what should effectively happen is, well, in this case, we've returned nothing. But if we actually go into the folder that we're currently working in, you can see that we now have a file called mission underscore journal. And if we open this up, let's say in VS code, you can see that it is in fact printing out our mission journal. So you can see there that it's gone and written, it's my first, oh, I didn't even write my first date. It's my first on the space mission. Clearly I'm, uh, I wasn't having a great day. It is very nice. Maybe I'd been hitting the beers up in space already. Uh, but you can see there that that's the way that we're able to go and write out to a file cool now in this particular case we've gone and written out to our file uh it, we could actually delete this and if i go and run it again you'll see that it will create the file in real time and you can see that it's gone and created our mission journal now now the next thing that we want to do is say for example we wanted to read something from our file well again it's a very similar process as what we've just written here except this time what we're going to do is we're going to read from it so let's do this so again, now we're going to read from our journal. Journal. And let's write it out. So we're going to use the with keyword, write open mission underscore journal dot txt. Except this time we are going to pass through the R flag because we want to read our journal. 
And again, we're going to refer to it as F. So this is going to be our temporary placeholder variable that allows us to work with our file while it's open. And then what we can actually do is we can actually read our file. So I'm going to create a placeholder variable, so file. And then we're going to set it equal to f.read. So let's take a step back and see what we've actually written there. I'm just going to grab a bit of water. Alrighty, back in the game. So I've written with open. So this is going to open up our file. And remember, by using the with statement, we're going to temporarily open it. We're going to do something with it. And then it's automatically going to close. So with open and then mission underscore journal dot txt. And then we've passed through the R flag because we want to read our file. And then we're going to be working at working with it as the file or variable f and then down here what i've written is file equals f dot read so this f dot read so f remember is our file while it's temporarily open the dot read method actually reads our file to be able to see what on earth is actually in there and then what we're doing is we're assigning the output from the f dot read method to a variable called file so if we go and run this now uh, uh, have we named it something different? Mission journal. Nope, I clearly typed, I spelled that wrong. So it should have been uh, mission J-O-U. Let's actually take a look at what that error is. So the error that we've just got there is a file not found error. And what it's saying here is file not found, error number two or error no two. I don't know what that's actually referring to, but maybe line two. No such file, I know what this means. So no such file or directory, mission underscore journal. And that's because I <laughs> didn't even type the name of the journal out, right? So it's mission underscore journal, maybe a little bit French there. Um, that's, I'm pretty sure that's not French for journal, but anyway. So what we can do is we can correct the name of the file. So if I remove the R from this, this should read our journal correctly. And there you go. So no errors this time. And you see, kids, that's why error handling is important. So we'll get to that a little bit later. But now what we can do is we can actually print out the results from our file. And you can see it's printed out. It's my first, should have been day, but it's my first on the space mission. It is very nice. Pretty cool, right? So that is in a nutshell how to read or write stuff to files and read stuff from files. I've gone through this relatively quickly because more often than not, particularly in data science, you're actually going to be using the built-in tools. So if you're, this just sort of gives you an idea as to how to write something out quickly if you needed to. But when you're doing true data science projects, particularly with pandas, there's a function called dot or method called dot to CSV, which will actually allow you to output your entire pandas data frame to a CSV. In uh, NumPy, I think you can save with TensorFlow, you can save weights, which allows you to save a H5 file. So just keep in mind that this is important, but you, more often than not, you're going to be using the native output methods. Let's take some questions. What's happening? How you doing, Chen? Thanks for tuning in. How you doing, Thinam? Thanks for tuning in. Big Samosa, what up? Hey, Alicia, how you doing? PowerCube, we love Jupiter, hell yeah. Do some code wars problems. I love this. PyTorch or Pandas? Um, both. I like them both. How you doing, Natalia? What about a, a Pandas use? Oh, yeah. Actually, this is a really good point to note. So another one that's useful here is Append. So this actually allows you to append something to a specific file. Very, very important to note. So using Append is also another useful read mode. But on that topic, that is our working with files done in a nutshell. Now, again, there's a whole bunch more that you can do in this space, but it's nice to have a little bit of a refresher so you can sort of see how to do this. What I really wanted to focus on today is error handling. Now, it's relatively simple to do, but it's going to add a whole lot more robustness. Love that word. Robustness to your actual code because you're handling errors gracefully. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another section. So we're going to escape out of this cell. And we are going to hit M as markdown. And then what we're going to do is hit the pound symbol and create section 10. So uh, we're going to name this error handling. And then what we actually need to do is, or let's actually create something that's going to throw an error. So remember right way back when we were doing, um, working with different data types, we learned about different types of data types. So we looked at uh, lists, we looked at dictionaries, we looked at tuples, we looked at sets, and um, we looked at a bunch of different data types. 
Now, a key feature of a set is that it is immutable, right? So you can't go and change a set once you've gone and created it. So let's actually go and create a set and then we're gonna to try to change it and you'll see that it throws an error. But what we can do is we can actually wrap it inside of error handling or inside of an error handling block. And that means it's not going to fail and crash. It's just going to print out an error quite nicely. And we can actually do something with that error and maybe change what the error message that's returned to the user is. So this is really, really useful, particularly when you're building um, APIs. So say, for example, you are building a Flask API and somebody sends through the incorrect data format. Rather than just crashing your API, what you might want to do is return something gracefully and say, hey, what you sent through isn't the right actual format. Um, also useful whenever you're deploying your machine learning models. So say it's expecting an image of the size uh, 100 by 100 by 3, and somebody sends through something which is 120 by 140 by 3, then you might say, hey, the image file needs to be returned in this format rather than crashing your API. So again, error handling, super, super useful. So first up, what we're going to do is we're going to create a set and we're going to try to update it and then crash it or let's cause an error. So let's create a set first up to so create a set. Give us some more room here. So uh, we're going to call it a new set. And we are going to call it set, or we're going to wrap it inside of a set and then pass through uh, just a bunch of numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So that is our new set created, right? We could also get rid of this and just wrap it inside of curly braces. Same sort of thing, right? You can see that there. Now, a key thing about our set is that if we go and try to update a value inside of that set, it's going to throw an error because you're not allowed to do that. Sets are immutable. So if we go and do this, right, so set it equal to zero or grab the first value. Oh, it's not subscriptable. So that's going to throw an error regardless, right? So if we went and did this and said, um, set it to four, you can see that it's saying type error set object does not support item assignment. So we can't uh, subscript our value and get a specific value out but just as easily we can't actually go and assign a value to that set so how do we actually go about this so rather than actually just throwing a tantrum and causing a massive error how might we actually handle this a little bit more gracefully well we can use something called a try keyword so if i hit try or type in try and then colon and tab this in if I go and run this now, oh, uh, what we actually need, we need to finish this block. So try is the first part. The second part is accept. And then we're going to capture our error. So in Python, errors are called or sometimes referred to as exceptions. So if I type in exception as E, then I can actually print out my error. So let's actually take a look at what we did there. So I've written try colon, and then I've gone and tried to execute my error block, which is new underscore set. And then we've gone and tried to assign this value. So the value one equal to four. Then what we've actually gone and returned. Or, so in this particular case, it's not actually running because we are going and throwing an error. Rather, we're actually printing out the error. In this particular case, the error is set. Object does not support item assignment. Now, rather than printing out that error to our user, we might say um, print. This is obviously going to give them less value, but we can actually comment this out. Print uh, something went, went wrong with your request. And so you can see there that rather than throwing a huge error and failing and getting back this, which looks uh, not as nice, what we can actually do is we can handle our errors a lot more gracefully. Now, this is really, really important when it comes to um, the software development lifecycle and building robust code. You want to handle your errors gracefully, not just cross your fingers and hope that they're not going to cause errors. So having stuff inside of uh, try catch blocks or try accept blocks in this case is going to make your code a lot more robust. But I've made an error and I haven't gone and commented it. So let's do that. So first up, the two parts to our error handling are the try statement or the try keyword. So this is the first part. So try something using the try keyword. And then we're actually going and running our code. So then run a piece of code, which may cause an error. And then what we're doing is we're actually handling our error. So if we have an error, this code below will run. 
And you can see here that what we're going to then do is it print out something that's a little nicer for the user. Right, so that sort of in a nutshell is error handling. Now let's actually take a look at what we wrote. So first up we wrote at try colon and then the code that we want to run. So you could replace whatever is under here with whatever code that you want to run, which may have or may or may not have errors. And then what we're doing is we're catching our error. So we're accepting an error and specifically by writing accept, exception. So exception is a reserved word. So it's going to pick up our error as E. So this E now effectively represents our actual error. So we can actually print that out. So if I type in E here, this is, uh, we don't actually have it inside of that block. Uh, it's not there. Let's print it out inside of here. Print E. So you can see this value here is actually what's being returned by this exception value. So if we actually got this, I think this should work. Uh, that's only returning our class exception. So we want to return it as E. There you go. Okay, that is how we can handle our error. So basically, accept exception as E. I probably need to dig into this a little bit more as to how this works. But basically, this is your basic flow that you're going to trigger whenever you're handling exceptions or errors in your code. So accept exception as E. So by default, exception is going to return the error class. But by printing it out as E, we effectively get the actual error. So in this case, set object does not support item assignment. Cool. That's all I had for today, guys. So again, a little bit of a shorter one just so we can wrap it all up. But this was the last video in the Python for Data Science series. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to piece them all together and give you one big mega video. So let's take a look and see if we've got any last questions. Make a video about reading. Uh, so I wish you would make a video about reading machine learning papers. I explained things so well. Oh man, I, I wish I could read machine learning papers really well. I'm actually working on something in that space at the moment. Um, so this, so uh, specifically around Siamese networks and uh, generative adversarial neural networks. So you'll see something coming in that space soon. Um, there's a whole bunch of great YouTubers out there. So I think Yannick uh, Kilcher or Kilcher, um, hopefully I haven't got his name too wrong. Sorry if you're watching this, but he does some great readings as well. Um, but I'm going to be starting to do them sort of soonish as well. So you'll see that. Supervised learning for gaming. That's definitely going to be coming. I know this one was quite short. Yeah, so, I'm, so Chen, this is a great question. So will we d dive deeper into pandas in the next set of tutorials? Yes. So I'm definitely, I've actually written all the code for the exact same type of series, but for NumPy and for pandas and for Seaborn slash Matplotlib. And I think I've already started one on um, OpenCV as well. So there's another four in this series if you guys are enjoying them. Um, but on that note, if we've got no other questions, I think we'll wrap it up. Cool. All righty. Let's wrap it up. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell. And thanks again.